Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christian. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, good day. Wherever you are, whenever you are seeing this, I hope you are good. So guys, today we're gonna be talking about raising your vibration and all things raising your vibration. Why we don't hear people talking about it anymore, how important it is to go back to the basics and some things that you could do today to raise your vibration. Um, and overall, the significance and the importance of it, you know? Um, so yeah, let's get into it. First things first, as always, if you wanna book a session with me, I'm a business reader, Boot to get your business together, you want to book your mentorship, you want to get a self-led tarot course. If you have a goal of learning tarot this year, you could book a self-led tarot course. Um, I think I already mentioned the releasing sessions. I'm not sure, but if you want to book private sessions with me, the link is forever in the description box, so get into it. Um, but guys, let's go ahead and just get into raising your vibration and kind of talking about possibly why we don't even really bring it up anymore. So I think that in the beginning, you know, whenever everyone in the beginning, you know, there was a heaven and the earth in the beginning when everyone was having their spiritual awakening. I think the spiritual awakening has been happening for a while, but I think 2017, 2018 was kind of the beginning stages of people kind of talking about frequency, you know, tarot readings being more frequent, crystals being more common, people using sage, Palo Santo, you know, I think the kind of the new age um, religion or the new age spirituality kind of just started really, really popping around that time. I also feel like when 2020 hit, it was just everything spiritual times 10 because of course people are inside they're sad um, people are trying to figure out how they can better their lives how they can better themselves so of course people are going to be focused on you know how to take care of themselves spiritually and what they need to do spiritually to get themselves together now i don't think any of these things are a problem i don't think any of that is an issue but i do think that the more aware we are as consumers the more aware you are the less um, dependent you will be on your spiritual practitioners. So I think that a lot of people that were in spiritual work, not really for spiritual work, but in spiritual work to just kind of help people forever without really making people self-sufficient in their spiritual journey. You know, the people that tell you, oh, you have a curse on you. You have to pay me X amount of dollars to get the curse removed or, oh, make sure you get a read with me before you make any big decision. It's a Mercury retrograde. You definitely need to book three readings with me, you know, every day over the retrograde so we can make sure that you're okay. If you don't, I don't know what's going to happen to you, you know, kind of like how everybody feels about the health industry or how a lot of people feel about the health industry it's about a cure rather than it is about you know prevention and i think that's what we've been seeing a lot in the spiritual community um i think people are more so selling the cure like this is how you get to eternal happiness without saying eternal happiness may or may not be possible for every human on the planet we all have different things that we're experiencing and eternal happiness whatever you're looking for this perpetual state of endless bliss you might not get there you might not get there and if you do get there you might not get there right now so how can you manage what you're experiencing on an everyday basis versus looking at someone that's like a healed messiah just trying to sell you the cure when they know they aren't even cured themselves you know i think that there's been less focus on raising your vibration because the truth of the matter is if you do raise your vibration you are also raising your intuition you're raising your discernment so you're going to be able to pinpoint when your energy is off because you're not miserable all the time you know a lot of times when people deal with depression and anxiety you know if you have a friend that comes into your life that makes you more insecure or upsets you more or brings more stress into your life you might not even think that it's that big of a deal because you're constantly dealing with stress and frustration anyway versus someone that isn't really dealing with stress when they have someone come in their life that stresses them out they're gonna, get, they're gonna instantly know it's this person let me figure out how I can get this person out of my life or how I can maneuver differently with this person so I'm not affected by the stress. Raising your vibration and being in control of your energy is power. And it's not power always that keeps putting money in, you know, the pocket of your favorite spiritualist, you know, whoever that might be. I'm not talking about anybody in particular, but, you know, the same way everybody was talking about raising their vibration you know, people were talking about manifesting this and that. People were then talking about the twin flame stuff. So everything comes and ebbs and flows as always. But I think, you know, if you're really trying to start a business, I think the last thing you want to do is allow your customers to be self-aware and know how to take care of themselves and heal themselves because then what are they going to need you for? But I think that's, you know, why we've seen such a shift of people just kind of not really bringing it up anymore. But I'm going to fucking talk about it because you guys know 
I don't get anything from anybody being dependent on me in any way. You know, I want you to be self-sufficient in your healing journey. I want you to know God for yourself. I don't want you to have to go to me to get to God. That's not how anything should work. You know, you should be able to go to God for yourself. You should be able to know what you believe in. You know, you should be able to pray. You should be able to get yourself together on your own. That's why I don't do releasing work for people even in my releasing sessions we do a reading i get messages for you about what you need to release and then i give you a very extensive guide of how to release everything that we talked about in all different ways so you can do the work on your own you know i don't believe in you know doing a love spell for somebody or doing a manifestation or releasing or doing something for somebody you know i think that we all need to be independent in our own work I think it could quickly become a microwave effect where we have a problem, we book a reading. We have a problem, we book a reading, you know? So I think it's important to be self-sufficient, you know, on your journey overall. So let's just kind of get into the importance of getting back to basics. Now, we remember um, typically finding your vibration, raising your frequency. This is something that people mostly talk about in the beginning of their journey, right? We're introduced to the concept of connecting with your vibration, connecting with your frequency, whatever that may look like. You know, we are electromagnetic beings. We are spirit beings in human suits. So we are omitting an electromagnetic frequency, whether we want to or not. If you want more scientific information about this, you can check out the book, Becoming Supernatural by Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, he gets in depth about how our, you know, emotions affect our brain chemistry, um, which affects the electromagnetic frequency that we, you know, give out to people. Um, they were measuring the brain waves that people were experiencing through meditation, through healing work, through change, and they were able to see how their, um, you know, brain waves were able to change and evolve. Um, it gets into the different frequencies of anger, of happiness, of fear, of faith, of hope, and how all of these different things affect us physically, but they also omit a different frequency. We are all energetic magnets, whether we want to feel like we are or not. So when you're in a space of negativity, when you're in a space where your frequency is not on a certain level, when your vibration is not on a certain level, you're going to be more susceptible to depression, to sadness, to negative outside influences versus having more control over your mind, over your spirit, over your energy as a whole. So getting back to the basics, this is something that I always tell people on their spiritual journey. When you get to the point where you feel like nothing is working, you, you've gone off your spiritual journey, you haven't done any work, you haven't connected with God in a minute, what do you do? Go back to the basics. You know, when you first started, were you meditating? Were you journaling? Were you doing yoga? You know, what made you feel good? Go back to the things that make you feel good. Go back to the things that elevate your spirit. That's the whole point of the spiritual journey, to raise your vibration so you can hear God. You cannot hear God when your vibration is negative and 32 you know you need to be able to be in a space where you can identify the voice of god within you you can identify what's right for you and what's wrong for you and when you're vibrating on a lower frequency what's wrong might feel right because you're vibrating on a frequency that is not positive i also think that people started to use low vibration and high vibration kind of to like bully people or to use the spiritual elitism like, you know, oh, you're low vibrational, I don't want you around me. Yeah, I remember the Coach Stormy debacle that happened a couple of years ago about the low vibrational plates, you know what I'm saying? So we've seen people quite literally overuse and incorrectly use the terms low vibrational, high vibrational, and low and high frequency, just like people have done with grand rising, you know? So I think collectively, we kind of have a little eh, taste in our mouth when it comes to saying if something is low vibrational or high vibrational, because you might want to seem, you might not want to seem like you're judging someone or something, you know, you might not want to seem like you're condemning someone or something, but the truth of the matter is everything has a vibration. And depending on what your vibration is in relation to you, it will be either higher or lower than your vibration. If you're on a set vibration and you're interacting with people that are lower than the vibration or entertainment that's lower, food that's lower, you know, your vibration is going to decrease because you're consuming things from all areas that are lower in your frequency versus you being someone that maybe has a medium to low vibration and you interject yourself into situations and spaces that uplift you, make you feel better, raise your vibration in all spaces. You know, eventually your vibration will rise and you'll end up being more confident. You'll be able to manifest easier. You'll have more faith. You'll be able to connect with God better. You'll be able to make it through rough spaces in a better, more optimistic way. So going back to the basics is always good. I always tell people, you know, anything can be misconstrued. A lot of people don't even want to have a relationship with God anymore because of how people have misconstrued the creator of the universe. 
So quite literally, everything is being misconstrued. That's why it's important to know for yourself. And that's why it's important to know your own frequency and know where your vibration lies because it's a real thing. Being low vibrational is not a bad word or a bad thing. It's a real thing. There is no good and bad. Being bad, being low vibrational or having a bad frequency about yourself is not like something to be ashamed of. It's a thing. It is what it is. Fix it. Do something about it, you know? I think this is why we also might stray away from doing vibrational work or doing frequency work because when you look at your life, you know, and this is what frequency or vibration work looks like, and I'm making this up as I go. When you look at your life, <laughs> when you look at your life and you give yourself a chance to identify how everything in your life is affecting you, all of your relationships, the things that you eat, the stuff that you do for work, the things that you consume, what you look at on social media, your relationships, your friendships, um, you know, your dreams, you know, your neighbors, the area that you're in, you know, when you examine everything in your life, everything in your life and you ask yourself if it's a good or bad influence on your life I guarantee you if you have more good I'm sure you are someone that is able to keep your energy a little bit higher or someone that has more bad influences in their life more negative influences in their life um, it probably is harder for this person to get themselves together like if someone is living in a toxic environment with toxic parents maybe one or two friends that they really can connect with and they have a job that they really like you know this person is in an environment that is toxic so even though they maybe enjoy their job and enjoy their friends, they still have to be in a toxic home environment on a regular basis. So that's going to be, you know, really affecting this person because this is where they spend most of their time and most of their energy. So if this person really wants to elevate their frequency, they have to find a way to deal with what is negatively affecting them and what's negatively influencing them. So this might mean spending less time at home. It might mean that when you are around family that you, you know, have your earplugs in, mind your business, stay out their way, keep quiet on your own space find a park or somewhere nearby you that you can walk to that you can decompress you know making it work for you in those spaces where they're bringing you down so they serve you if you can't get out of them right now because the truth of the matter is you might feel like certain things in your life are low vibrational but you might not be in the position to leave your job right now or move from your home or even you know get out of certain relationships because of your life situation so it's not about erasing everything that's low vibrational of course if that's the case for you to erase everything in your life that's negative that's negatively affecting you then absolutely erase it but for the majority of us you know it might not be that simple well let me not say the majority for some of us it might not be that simple you know so I think it's important to just recognize the effort you know just taking the effort in itself to be better and do better is a high vibrational act you know wanting to be better and do better is of a high vibration so it's a chance that you already are maybe a little bit further than you feel you know it's a chance that you might want better more than you feel it's a chance that your vibration might be higher than you already think so you know do a little assessment of your life think about what's impacting your life think about what is influencing you figure out if it's influencing you in a positive way or a negative way and here's the thing as well when you start to raise your vibration you are also raising your discernment like I said so you have to ask yourself if that's really what you want to do because I have a fairly fairly high vibration fairly high frequency and it's very hard for me to make relationships with people make connections with people I really don't like people I really don't like earth you know I can't I hate social media I really be on social media for my work I can't the day that I have enough money to never be on social media again y'all might not hear from me ever again seriously you know I love what I do but I hate the stuff that I see I hate how everybody you know is hateful towards each other and I hate that because it makes me you know not want to be around people um, but you know I hate how oblivious and how delusional some people can be when something is obviously hurting them and they feel like they deserve that pain I hate how angry people instead of getting better they just try to make everybody else angry i hate how we want to see misery spread i hate how we've been able to i don't know about you guys but i'm almost 30 and my generation i've been able to see love change friendship change connection change how people relate to each other change and it's sad it's depressing and being on a certain frequency it makes it even harder because a lot of things the majority of things that I come across are things that I can't have in my life but I'm having to make do because I'm a human on earth which is a garbage frequency in itself to be a fucking human you know I mean let's be real we're taking in so much every day 
from the chemicals in the air, the stuff that they're putting in our food. We can't even find fruit, you know, with seeds in it. I have loaves of bread that have been in my house for months that don't have a bit of mold on them. You know, I, I haven't seen a lemon with seeds in it in months, maybe even a year, you know, so there's so many questionable things that you're coming up against every day. And when you are on a certain frequency, you see those things even brighter. Like I know I was talking in the last video or maybe the video before that about the rose colored glasses. When your vibration is high, when your frequency is high, you're seeing everything through the opposite of rose colored glasses. You're able to see the problem. You're able to see the issues. You're able to see what's going to affect your frequency. And the truth of the matter is most things in life are going to probably negative effect, negatively affect your frequency before they positively affect your frequency. And I think that's just the name of the game. You know, we always say that there's a balance and there's an equal balance of good as there is a bad. But I think things are shifting. And I don't know about y'all, but I grew up in church and, you know, in Revelation, the chapter of Revelations is about the end of the world. And it talks about how there will be no more love in the world. There won't be any more happiness. There will be wars everywhere. Um, and I don't think that we're there right now but we'll be there in the next 100 years or 200 or 250 i mean or even a thousand it's gonna be absolutely terrible you know we still have significantly more love and hope in the world than there is going to be at the absolute end of the world so we have a long long way to go but i can see those microscopic steps to people not valuing family not valuing love not valuing marriage not valuing friendship people not valuing trust, people not valuing, valuing how long somebody's been in their life, people not being self-aware and they don't care, people not wanting to heal, people not wanting to do the work. You know, there is no shame anymore around being a bad person. People don't feel bad about being bad, you know? And I think that says a lot, that people feel good about being bullies, that people feel good about being negative. And I think, you know, it's even more so now because the people that we look at, you know, our celebrities and the people that are in high spaces of ranking. Maybe back in the day, we didn't really know someone's deep, dark secrets until they passed away, until somebody came out years and years later saying it. We are seeing in real time the evil that we are consuming in our music, in our media. You know, we are seeing people playing with God and playing with us, you know, saying, this is how you get this. Follow me. Connect with me. Um, we're seeing people play with God and start new businesses where they're saying they love God and a year later they ain't got nothing about God on their Instagram page, you know. I think that things are just changing and they're going to continue to change. And it's more important now than ever to be able to get your frequency together and your vibration together because everything is affecting you, whether you believe it or not. And if you don't have a handle on it, you're going to be miserable before you know it because there's nothing to make you happy. I mean, if you don't monitor what you look at on social media, you're gonna be looking at baddies all day, Zeus all day, hate all day, podcast BS all day, this person did this, this person did this, story times of how people are treating each other terribly. People don't like even seeing positive stuff online. Like I always look at those pages where people are meeting people on the street and giving them money or people are saying, do you want this mystery gift or this, you know, and people are blessing people with money that they need. They always end up connecting with people that need a blessing. People are starting GoFundMes to buy people houses and stuff like that. I love, 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 love seeing that on social media. And people are always in the comments like, why are you taking photos of this? If you really wanted to help somebody, you wouldn't do this. We've gotten to the point where we don't even like seeing happiness online. Like under the comments of something terrible, people are laughing. People are full of joy to see someone else's demise. And when people see someone getting something, when people see someone crying tears of joy, they're like, ugh, I don't want to see this on my timeline. That's a problem. That's a problem. And because of that, if you're not weeding out the negativity and purposefully looking to place yourself amongst positive influences, you're going to be susceptible to all of those things. It's kind of like if, because you know everything is about the algorithm, right? If people collectively like to see BS, they like to see fight and they like to see violence, they like to see hate, you're going to see more hate than anything because that's what the majority is looking at. That's what the majority is consuming. You have to work extra, 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 extra hard online. Say what you're not interested in. Curate your feed to where you're looking at beautiful, happy things. Because if you don't go the extra mile to do that, you're going to consume a bunch of trash. And that's literally how it is in your everyday life. You have to go the extra mile to protect yourself and remove things that don't serve you. And if you don't, 
you are going to be consuming garbage on a very, very regular basis. We have to stay in control of that. We have to stay on top of that. And it's hard because we're seeing all these wars. We're seeing genocide. We're seeing, you know, all of these terrible, you know, scandals and all of these horrific things that are coming to the light. More is going to be coming to the light as we go throughout this year and as we go throughout the world. You know, the veil is gone. There is no more veil. Um, and things are coming to the light, even in our own personal lives. You know, family drama is coming to the source, is coming to the surface. I've had more family tea spilled in the last 18 months than I've ever even known. You know, so things are coming to the light. Things are coming to the surface. And it's up to you to prepare yourself with an armor of positivity, of prayer, of, you know, godly spiritual connection and strength. Because if you don't, how are you going to protect yourself from everything that you're around? And with a lot of people monitoring a cure or promoting a cure, like, hey, you can do this, you can take this class, you can read my book, you can do this and be cured forever. And nothing negative is ever going to affect you ever again when that's not the reality. You know, when you need skills and tools every day to raise your vibration, to keep you optimistic, to keep you faithful, like we need things that can help us and pour into us and give us what we need every single day. That is what we need. We have to be able to stay on top of ourselves. We have to be able to stay on top of, you know, our relationships and our connections. You know, as your vibration is rising, you don't have the benefit of staying quiet when people violate you, when people disrespect you, when people are crossing your boundaries. Whether you're going to speak on it or just hold your tongue and not say anything about it, you won't have the ability to act like you don't see it or act like it doesn't affect you because it will, even if it only affects you behind closed doors. I also think that people have realized the journey of raising your vibration is more difficult than it is easier. You know, just like the journey to be a good person, it's hard to be a good person. It's much easier to let your insecurity, your darkness overtake you because we're in a space where everybody is a Grinch. So it's hard to be Cindy Lou Who in a world full of Grinches, but that's quite literally what our spiritual journey looks like. You know, working to find the good within us and cultivate the good in as many hearts as possible, even when we're getting a lot of backlash from the people in our lives and the people in the world as a whole. So when you're going to be raising your vibration, I think I mentioned this forever and ever ago, you definitely want to monitor what you're looking at on social media. Like this is what I talked about in my video about raising your vibration three years ago, I think in 2020, when I was filming in my kitchen in Atlanta that did not have good light and honey. Um, I think I mentioned, you know, watching what you consume on social media. That is super, super important because we're not seeing what we used to see on social media. You used to have to worry about seeing who's cheating on who on social media. Now there are children being exploited on social media. There are people talking negatively about children on social media. There are people playing with God and, you know, being very blasphemous, like it's a joke on social media. Um, there is a lot of violence. There is a lot of you know, just perpetual evil that is on our cell phones. And um, it's more important than ever to monitor what you're looking at. But also people are more nonchalant than ever about what they're looking at. People don't think anything's strange about going from Instagram to threads to Twitter, back to Instagram, back to threads, back to Facebook, back to YouTube, back to this, back to this. People are on their phones more than ever. People are consuming trash more than ever. It's not even strange anymore to be looking at the shade room all day and then you have your Hollywood alone locked and then you have the it's on site and then you have this and then you have this, you know? We love drama more than ever. We love issues more than ever. For some reason, we are so connected and invested in the failure of everyone else. We all have an unhealthy allegiance to losers that does not make any sense, okay? Like, we have to deal with that and we have to realize what is in us. What darkness in us is being satiated are being served by the darkness that we're seeing in the world you know is there a part of you that likes to know that other people are suffering as well is there a part of you that feels better knowing that other people are struggling is there a part of you that enjoys laughing at people because it takes your attention off of the terrible things that you're dealing with and trying to heal you know i think most low vibrational things are rooted in distraction rooted in let me get you focused on everything but what you need to be focused on because everything is either light or dark, right? It's either of God or it's of evil, period. It's either of light or it's not. So 
you know, similarly, when things are of high vibration, they get you closer to your highest self. They get you closer to who God wants you to be. They get you closer to divinity. Anything that is low vibration is going to get you closer to evil. It's going to get you more comfortable in evil. It is evil to gossip about people every day. How many of us have friendships totally based around gossip? That's evil. And we don't even realize that. It's evil to spew hate to strangers. We don't even realize that. It's evil to think negatively and wish negatively upon someone, even if they've done you wrong. We don't even see that anymore. Like I said, people say, you go low, I'm going to hell. You know, that's cute now. That's cute. Getting your one, getting your lick back, doing your big one, standing on business. That's cute now. So we are, even in our children, ugh, God help the children, you know, we are just, and God help us, because when we are old, you know, 80, 90, 100 years old, the children now that can't read or write are going to be the people that are supposed to be taking care of us, you know, and leading our society into the next whatever it's going to be in. So I think the things that are low vibrational are trying to distract you and make you feel like bad isn't that bad, you know, that darkness, evil, gossip, problems, issues, other people suffering, it's not that bad. It's okay to indulge in that because it makes you feel a little bit better. You know, how can something be bad for you if it makes you feel a little bit better, if it gives you a little satisfaction, you know? We're kind of being programmed to serve ourselves by the worst type of therapy, by the worst type of healing method, you know? And I think that this is something that people have done since the beginning of time. Housewives have always came together and gossiped about what everybody's going on in the neighborhood because they're going home and their husband is beating on them. Or they're going home and their husband is cheating. They're going home and they can't get a job because their husband won't let them get a job. You know, I think collectively as humans, we've always, you know, sought out a distraction from our upset and from our sadness. Um, and I think that you know, we're going to continue to do that to a certain degree. You know, there's things that we all do that we want to make us feel better. But distraction and healing aren't the same thing. Healing is the opposite of distraction. You know, healing is quite literally opening up the wound, lifting up the band-aid, and literally putting the claws in and opening up so you can see how deep it goes, so you can see every organ that's affected, so you can see every blood vessel that you're going to have to go through, every path, every little influence, so you can see everything that's affecting it, and then going in and taking everything out by hand. No anesthesia. That's quite literally what healing is looking like. That's it. Because what is anesthesia? Toxic shit on social media, right? looking at people that don't give a fuck about you and you keep putting your energy and your time into keeping up with that stuff that doesn't have anything to do with you. Um, having people in your life that make you feel better when you put them down, that's anesthesia. Keep allowing toxic energies into your life, that could be anesthesia. You bullying your children because you don't feel happy about your own life, that is anesthesia. There's a lot of things that we try to do to numb the pain that we're feeling and there's no way to numb it. There's no way to numb it. Anesthesia doesn't last forever. Even in surgery, it's dangerous to be under anesthesia for so long. It is dangerous to be disconnected from what you need to heal and what you need to work on. It's dangerous because when you're under anesthesia, you don't know what's happening. You know, that's why sometimes when they do brain surgery, they have to leave you awake because they want to know what's effective while they're doing surgery. You know, sometimes when you're in healing and you're trying to distract yourself from it or you're not really tapped into what you're supposed to be doing, you can be affecting things that you don't even realize. You could be losing things that you don't even realize. That's why when we finally are ready to heal, we have no energy. We have no energy. We have no will. We have no discipline. You know, self-love is low. Faith is low. Hope is low. We have little to no resources. Or we can't even see the resources because we've been numbing ourselves for so long that the first sight of what we really need to heal, no anesthesia, we can't do it. It's too much for us and we break down instantly and we go right back to those low vibrational things that distract us and get us further, further, further from the light and deeper into the darkness. It gets us deeper into the darkness. So I think that we should switch up how we feel about vibrations and I think we should recognize how we are under attack um, from everybody, from everything. If you are someone that wants to heal, if you're someone that's trying to get close to God, if you're someone that has a desire to heal on a spiritual level, if you want this to be the last time you're on earth, if you want to handle your business now, um, then you have a lot that you're up against. You know, you can have proof, evidence in front of somebody's face, like this is what you did to me and they'll call you a liar. That will make you feel disillusioned. You know, we have to trust ourselves now more than ever. 
we have to lean on ourselves now more than ever and when you're intaking a lot of negativity it makes it that much harder to believe in yourself and have faith in yourself it makes it that much harder and like i said imagine being in a world of grudges as one cindy lou who you know it's going to be way 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 difficult for you way more harder to find the light and think that it's worth it you know for some of us we see that there's problems all around and we just feel like fuck it it is what it is you know this is a problem this is a problem what am i supposed to do i don't have anything that i can do there's nothing that i can do so it is what it is and that's not fair we should never feel like it is what it is we should never feel like there's nothing else i can do whatever we should never ever ever feel like that we should always feel like there's a chance for something new but that's a very high vibrational belief that no matter what you face it's not the end even death is not the end that's a very high vibrational, almost delusional kind of mindset to step into. And I say delusional because we're taught the opposite, you know. We are now being taught the opposite of truth in more ways than one. And it can be exhausting. It can be tiring. It can be stressful. It can be frustrating. It can be all of those things under the sun and then some. Um, I feel like we're now kind of being taught that the healing journey should look like this. And if it doesn't look like this, then you're doing something wrong. And it's kind of just like psyching us out and making us feel like, oh my God, if I'm not cured, then there must not be a cure for me. So let me just give up and focus on X, Y, and Z. Let me just give up and accept whatever is coming my way. And that's the worst thing that we can do. Quite literally, it's the worst thing that we can do. You know, we are not in a space where we should accept less than. We're not in a space where we should just accept anything that people give us. We should absolutely be demanding peace. We should absolutely be demanding um, to, you know, get the things that we really need in this life no matter what. And I think that it starts with recognizing that we want to raise our vibration and recognizing what's affecting us negatively, what's affecting us positively, how we can find more things that are going to affect us positively in different ways, how we can deal with the things that are affect us, how we can deal with things that are affecting us negatively. And, you know, just so we can handle it once and for all, just so we can handle it once and for all. Um, so, yeah, guys. That is the spiel about, you know, raising your vibration today, different things to be mindful of in terms of raising your vibration, different things to be thinking about. Um, and, you know, just some truth about the journey of raising your vibration and how things have changed, how it's more important now than ever to raise your vibration and get yourself together. Um, if you want me to do a part two of this based on questions that you guys have, let me know the questions down below and I can definitely answer them. Um, but I appreciate y'all. I thank you guys. If you guys want to book any sessions with me, then go ahead, check out my new website in the description box and get into it. I appreciate you guys. I love y'all and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys. Bless.